sixth grade, module four, lesson 28, problem set. Use tape diagrams to solve each problem. Number one, Dwayne scored <clears throat> 55 points in the last basketball game, which is 10 points more than his previous personal best. LeBron scored 15 points more than Chris in the same game. LeBron scored the same number of points as Dwayne's previous personal best. Let D represent the number of points Dwayne scored during his, pre during his previous personal best, and C represent the number of Chris's points. How many points did Chris score during the game? And if these are the only three players who scored, what was the total number of points at the end of the game? Okay, so we have Dwayne. LeBron and Chris. So it says that Dwayne scored 55 points in the last basketball game, which is 10 points more than his previous personal best. And it wants us to let D represent the number of point, points Dwayne scored during his previous personal best. So we're going to have Dwayne, and then D represents his previous personal best. And he scored 10 points more than his previous personal best. And the whole thing is 50, 55. So we can figure out what D is, but let's go on to um, LeBron. So LeBron scored 15 points more than Chris in the same game. But do we know anything about Chris? Um, we don't. So Chris is just going to be... C and LeBron scored 15 points more than Chris and the same number of points as Dwayne's previous personal best. So here's Dwayne's previous personal best. So D. So he scored the same number of points as Dwayne's previous personal best and he scored 15 points more than Chris. So that means that Chris is 15 less than Dwayne. So we could either use LeBron as that D or we could use it as C plus 15. I'm gonna get rid of this actually, cause that's just Chris if it would erase. Okay. So now we can start solving. So I'm going to start with, um, we need to figure out how much Chris solved, but first let's figure out, we need to figure out what Dwayne is here. So what this D is, we have D plus 10 is equal to 55. So the D plus 10 is the whole 55. So we can do D plus 10 minus 10 will be equal to 55 minus 10, where D is equal to 45. So this is 45. So that means that LeBron scored 45 points. And if we want to find out what Chris is, to find Chris is C plus 15 would be equal to this is 45. So we can figure that out by doing C plus 15 minus 15 will be equal to 45 minus 15. So C is equal to 45 minus 15 or 30. So Chris scored 30 points. So we can say that Chris scored 30 points. So that's the answer to part A. B, if these are the only three players who scored, what was the team's total number of points at the end of the game? So remember, Dwayne had 55 points, LeBron had 45, and Chris had 30. So let's do 55 plus 45 would be 100 plus 30 is 130. So it would be a total of 130 points were scored. Number two, the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies varies throughout the day. 
During the lunch rush, lunch rush on Saturday, there were 120 customers at Yummy Smoothies. The number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during dinner time was 10 customers fewer than the number during breakfast. The number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during lunch was three times more than during breakfast. How many people were at Yummy Smoothies during breakfast? How many people were at Yummy Smoothies during dinner? Let D represent the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during dinner and B represent the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during breakfast. Okay, so this is a whole paragraph of information. So try not to be overwhelmed by how much, how many words are just in the question, in the paragraph itself. So let's start with the first sentence. The number of customers at Yummy Smoothies varies throughout the day. Okay. So we know there's not the same amount of people throughout the day. That we don't that sentence doesn't really give us any information. So we'll move on to the next one. During the lunch rush on Saturday, there were 120 customers at Yummy Smoothies. Okay, that's helpful. So we know during lunch, so I'm gonna make a lunch diagram. So for lunch, there were 120 customers. So I'm just going to make a tape diagram, leave it empty, and we know that lunch was 120 customers. So the next sentence says, the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during dinner was 10 fewer than the number during breakfast. So we know whatever they had at dinner time was 10 less than during breakfast. So let's make a dinner diagram. And remember they said that we need to let D represent the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during dinner. So I'll make a tape diagram. So we know that dinner was 10 fewer than breakfast. So whatever, let's call this whole thing breakfast. So dinner, D is for dinner, plus 10 is equal to breakfast. All right, next sentence says, the number of customers at Yummy Smoothies during lunch, so we know during lunch was three times more than during breakfast. So whatever lunch was, it was three times more than during breakfast. So this lunch here, this 120 is three times more than breakfast. So we could break this into three pieces. So lunch, three breakfasts is equal to lunch. So we could say three B is equal to lunch, which we know was 120. So let's figure out what B is. So if we do three times B, we get 120. So we need to work backwards and do the opposite of three times b, let's do three b divided by three. Remember, whatever we do to one side, we need to do the other. So let's do 120 divided by three. So three b divided by three would just be b is equal to, and 120 divided by three. Well, 12 divided by three is four, so 120 divided by three would be 40. So breakfast, there were 40 people. We can say there were 40 people at breakfast. Now let's figure out dinner. So if breakfast is 40, so this is equal to 40, then dinner plus 10 was equal to breakfast. So what plus 10 is equal to 40? D plus 10 is equal to 40. And so this would be 30, or you could say D plus 10, and then get rid of the 10, is equal to 40. And what we added here was the minus 10. So D is equal to 30, 30 people at dinner. Number three, Carter has 24 t-shirts. Carter has eight fewer pairs of shoes than pairs of pants. If the number of t-shirts Carter has is double the number of pants he has, how many pairs of shoes does Carter have? Let P represent the number of pants Carter has and S represent the number of pairs of shoes he has. 
Okay, so we know he has 24 t-shirts. So let's start with, so that's what, let's start with the first sentence. So he has 24 t-shirts. So I'm gonna make a tape diagram. We know that tape diagram, the whole thing is equal to 24 t-shirts. He has eight fewer pairs of shoes than pairs of pants. So let's make a tape diagram for shoes. So he has eight fewer pairs of shoes than pairs of pants. So let's say that the pants, if this whole thing is equal to the pants, P is pants, he has his shoes plus eight would be equal to his pants. Okay. And then the next sentence says, if the number of t-shirts, number of t-shirts Carter has is double the number of pants he has. So his t-shirts is double, are double the number of pants. So two sets of however many pants he has is equal to 24, which helps us a lot. So we know that 2p is equal to 24. So we can figure out what p or pants is equal to. So we have two times p equals 24, so we need to get the p alone. So two times p, we can get p alone by dividing by two. Whatever we do to the left, we need to do to the right. So 24 divided by two. So this would just be p is equal to 24 divided by two is 12. So pants is equal to 12. So then we have S, or the shoes, plus 8 is equal to 12. So S plus 8 is equal to 12. We need to get S alone. So S plus 8, to get rid of the 8, we just subtract 8. And whatever we do on that side, we need to do on the other. So 12 minus 8. So S is equal to 4. Or shoes is equal to 4. So he has 4 pairs of shoes. Number four, Darnell completed 35 push-ups in one minute, which is eight more than his previous personal best. Mia completed six more push-ups than Katie. If Mia completed the same amount of push-ups as Darnell completed during his previous personal best, how many push-ups did Katie complete? Let D represent the number of push-ups Darnell completed during his previous personal best, and K represent the number of push-ups Katie completed. Okay, so in the first sentence, we know Darnell completed 35 push-ups in one minute. So I'm going to make a tape diagram for Darnell, and we know he completed 35 push-ups in one minute which is eight more than his previous personal best. So down here it said let D represent the number of push-ups Darnell completed during his previous personal best. So we can do D is his previous personal best plus eight is equal to 35. As we know that D was, is, represents his previous personal best and he got eight more than his previous personal best, which was 35. Okay, so we have that part. Mia completed six more push-ups than Katie. So that doesn't really help us because we don't know how many, or that sentence, we need that sentence, but right now we don't know how many Mia completed and we don't know how many Katie completed. So right now that's not very helpful. But then the next sentence says, if Mia completed the same amount of push-ups as Darnell completed during his previous personal best. So Mia, is the same amount as Darnell's previous personal best. So whatever D is, so this is D. Mia completed the same amount, and that was six more than Katie. So Katie is what that part, but six fewer. So K plus six would get us Mia's personal best. Let's see, so if Mia completed the same amount of push-ups as Darnell completed during his previ 
Previous personal best, how many push-ups did Katie complete? Let D represent the number of push-ups Darnell completed during his previous personal best, and K represent the number of push-ups Katie completed. Okay, so we can start with this. Let's start with Darnell. So let's find his previous personal best first. So we know that D plus 8 is equal to 35. So to get rid of the 8, we need to do D plus 8 minus 8 is equal to 35. Whatever we did on this side, the left, we did minus 8, so we need to do minus 8. So D is equal to 35 minus 8 is 27. So 27 is D, so this is 27, and this is 27. So D is equal to 27, which helps us figure out Katie's. So we know Mia uh, had 27 push-ups, which is great, but it doesn't ask us how many push-ups Mia had, so but we need that to get to our answer. So Katie is so K plus 6 is equal to 27. So to get rid of the 6, K plus 6, we do minus 6 is equal to 27 minus 6. So K is equal to 27 minus 6 is 21, which means Katie completed 21 push-ups. And again, remember this is math which means there are many different ways to get to one right answer. So if you came across the answer in a different method, that is great. This is just one way to solve the problem. Number five, Justine swims freestyle at a pace of 150 laps per hour. Justine swims breaststroke 20 laps per hour slower than she swims butterfly. If Justine's freestyle speed is three times faster than her butterfly speed, how fast does she swim breaststroke? Let B represent Justine's butterfly speed in laps per hour, and R represent Justine's breaststroke speed in laps per hour. Okay, so I think one important thing to note is it wants us to do B for butterfly, but then R for breaststroke. So they both start with B, but R is going to represent breaststroke, and B is going to represent butterfly. Okay, because it's going to be easy to just think B represents breaststroke and butterfly. Okay, so. First sentence, Justine swims freestyle at a pace of 150 laps per hour. So freestyle is 150 laps per hour. So this whole thing is 150. Justine swims breaststroke 20 laps per hour slower than she swims butterfly. Okay, but we don't know much about either of those, so let's go to the next sentence. If Justine's freestyle speed is three times faster than her butterfly speed. Okay, so this freestyle, this 150, is three times faster than butterfly. So three of her freestyles would get us one butterfly. Remember, butterfly is B. So three Bs is equal to 150. Three butterflies is 150. Now, we also know that she swims breaststroke 20 laps per hour slower than she swims butterfly. So her breaststroke is R is breaststroke, so the whole thing, we know that this butterfly would be whatever breaststroke is, but 20 more. Okay, so let's go back to and figure out what B is, and then we'll be able to figure out what the breaststroke represents. Okay, so 3 times B we need to do divided by 3 to get the B alone. And if we divide by 3 on the left, we need to divide by 3 on the right. So B is equal to 150 divided by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so 153, 150 divided by 3 would be 50. So B is equal to 50, which is important because now we can plug it into here. 
So B is equal to 50. So 50 is equal to R plus 20. So to get the R alone, we need to do R plus 20 minus 20. And since we did it to that side, 50 minus 20 is equal to 30. So 30 is equal to R. We can say that she swims breaststroke at a pace of 30 laps per hour.